Uh, my name is Dan Barnes Davis. At the school in my parish, they call me Father Dan. Uh, I am a straight, white, middle class, British born man of British heritage. Uh, I, I say that because, as I know later, I am very privileged indeed. I was born and raised in Essex. Uh, that, that's not necessarily part of the privilege. <laughs> Not, not that it isn't, uh, anyway. Um, uh, and I was raised in a very rural village uh, where my parents bred dogs. Uh, so we had five Wheaton Terriers uh, at one point, and overall about 70 puppies, overall. Mum tells me that as a toddler, I had uh, developmental assessments, uh, but I don't remember, and I was never diagnosed with anything, um, and it didn't come up for my entire childhood, as far as I remember. Um, I wasn't diagnosed, uh, mostly because and I am trying to be modest, I was quite bright. Um, I was quite bad at all kinds of sports, except swimming. Uh, I never could ride a bike, uh, but crikey did I try. I was always a sort of low-level disruptive in class, um, but kind, if cheeky. Uh, and I always finished my classwork uh, perfectly. I was baptised in the Church of England as a baby, uh, but I found, found my own faith through my grammar school's Christian Union and a youth group. And I studied philosophy at uni and, while there, became part of the chaplaincy and the student Christian movement. That's when I became an Anglican and, indeed, an inclusionist, someone who believes that including all sorts of people in the church and in her mission is part of Christ's command to us. So when I started to learn about privilege, that's when I started to learn about privilege uh, and also started to feel the call to priesthood. I first heard dyspraxia described um, during my teacher training lectures on special educational needs, and I thought to myself, oh, well. <laughs> Having dropped out, it was the paperwork that got me. I scuttled home to the parents and began the long process of interviews and what have you, that in the Church of England we call the discernment process to be a priest, in my case. At a similar time, I became a trustee of Inclusive Church. Um, I had come through, through that journey of university and just after to care very deeply about all kinds of exclusion, um, despite, possibly also because, of being very privileged myself. And I started to help out with this uh, very conference in, I think, according to me, my emails in 2013. When I arrived at my theological college, or vicar school if you like, in 2014, I immediately got them to get a specialist in to assess me for dyspraxia. Now that specialist took me through the standard tests and said it was very clear that I had dyspraxia. Uh, although my very high scores across the board explained why, I'd never been, why that had never been picked up before. Um, Oh, and at the end of the time to get, uh, our time together, once I finished my final exams, he suggested that we do, almost for fun, indicative testing for ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Uh, and I've since got that diagnosis confirmed by a psychiatrist. So you see, uh, dyspraxia, among other neurodiverse labels, is diagnosed by patterns of distress um, within these tests and their scores, not by an overall level. As we all know, <laughs> neurodiversity is not about being less, but by, about being different. I describe it like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a geek, uh, this might not work for you, I describe it like in a role-playing game, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, that sort of thing. Um, when you are creating a character, uh, you have a certain number of points to spend uh, to buy their traits and their skills. So if the character has very high charisma, uh, you can't afford to give them 
even average coordination. <laughs> For instance. It's not, not that I'm claiming especially high charisma, but there, there we are. <laughs> anyway, my, um, I got to my vicar school, uh, theological college, uh, and it fulfilled its obligations towards me um, because educational contexts have decent understanding of what actions equality law requires of them. And because I knew as well, and I am persistent. But training to be a vicar isn't just about taking a degree in theology, or whichever qualification one takes. We also refer to another part of the training which forms us. We call it formational. So was the formational context adapted to me? How much, you will all wonder this too, how much are my quirks part of my disability and therefore a protected characteristic? And how much are they just me? For instance, I am a little obsessive over good governance because I believe that, and I have seen evidence that, Having good rules and following them tends to protect the vulnerable from abuse much better than relying on the benevolence of the powerful, no matter how good those people might happen to be. Now, at Vicar School, uh, amongst some big changes, it was announced that they would uh, renew efforts to treat us like adults. Well, hooray! <laughs> But my personal observation after the fact <coughs> is that this noble sentiment turned into a culture where rules and boundaries weren't set down, or acknowledged, or respected. <coughs> where ordinance, trainee priests, could get away with almost anything right up until the moment that they couldn't, <laughs> or that they transgressed something that they didn't know was a boundary sometimes because it wasn't one until that moment. <laughs> I am still re realising how deeply that atmosphere hurt me and how that relates to my brain type. <laughs> I say that the best thing my college did for me was to send me for therapy. <laughs> um, I went to the specialist ministry therapist at St Marylebone. The way I survived in that final year uh, was essentially by pulling my focus out of engagement with that community. The community which I lived in for three years. I uh, you know, lived in college <laughs> and ate there and prayed there and attended about half of my lectures there. <laughs> and that I cared about probably too much. As most of us here know, sometimes neurotypicals assume that we don't understand their emotions. We know that it is more often like we can't control how many of them we feel, nor how strongly we feel. I am worried about this experience of college. Uh, that entire section was typed in red in case I decided to cut it out. I am distressed by the systems of control which abound in the discernment training and curious process. And for those who need a warning, I am about to swear once. At every stage, any number of people in authority could simply decide to fuck up your life. And the further down the road you get, the worse it will be. The more trapped you are in the church's systems, the more you must conform. This it's the very definition of coercion. And it is performed, I like to reassure myself unwittingly by a senior clergy, good people on behalf of Christ Church. As a curate, questions have been raised over whether I can function as a vicar. Primarily because I cannot, I am physically incapable of, making the way that I concentrate look normal. In meetings, I have to do something like fiddle, or doodle, or even get up and pace. 
in order to pay the speaker a respectful level of, level of attention. One occasion was the bishop's charge, it's his sort of speech, uh, the night before my priesting. Uh, through the retreat, throughout the retreat week, I had chosen a particular seat at the back of the chapel so that I could fiddle without distracting anyone else. When I arrived for the charge, the area bishops were in those seats. Uh, so the bishop's chaplain directed me to a nave seat. When I inevitably got up to go and pace in the ante chapel, the bishop's chaplain whispered to me, I can't, yeah, whispered to me that this, this is compulsory. I replied that I knew I would be pacing in the ante chapel. I have been open with my diocesan hierarchy about my disability. I could, I could have been asked to explain to key people what my differences are and what adjustments I need. Even within GDPR, certain people could have been briefed. Instead, any behaviour that I show which they don't expect just adds to their narrative that I am willfully weird and or incompetent. He can't function as a vicar. Now again, for folk who need warning, I'm about to swear once more. <laughs> I call bullshit. Amen. They are right that I absolutely cannot be a normal vicar. Do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I am coming more and more to accept that God created and loves me exactly how I am and learning to feel loved as my true self, thanks in no small part to my brilliant, disabled fiancé. All of this is helping me to realise and celebrate that I don't want to be a neurotypical vicar. I want to be me and a vicar and a husband and whatever else God calls me to be and to do. I have been a blood no <laughs> I have been abundantly blessed with privilege of all kinds, and I am abundantly blessed with friends and comrades. Because in the power of these and with God, I can defeat this coercive system and thrive in ministry. And I hope transform these unjust structures for those who will come after me. To quote one of my favourite TV series, Firefly, no power in the verse can stop me. I'm used to saying amen at this point.